Hey hey, how's it going guys? My name is Elwood and today we are looking at Wayward Souls, a game just recently released on Steam and to answer the ultimate question, is it worth your time? So, Wayward Souls is a single player indie pixel art roguelike action hack and slash RPG where you play as one of seven different heroes, delve deeper and deeper down several floors of the various dungeons while using the many different weapons, spells and items you find to take on the horde of enemies you'll be facing around each corner. Now, aesthetically the game is definitely 16-bit inspired due to the design of all the visual assets of the game. As you can probably tell, for a pixel art game, the visuals are very impressive. It definitely has that retro look and feel to it, except with brilliant designs and a much smoother feel to the frames and animations. Colours used are mainly very dark and dull to bring out that dank, old, dungeon crawler feel to the game that never gets old no matter how many times you see it. Not being sarcastic by the way. Again, it just gives everything that cold, lonely feel which is pretty top notch, especially for an indie game. The best visuals of the game are by far the lighting effects. You can tell just at a glance how good the lighting effects are, fucking brilliant. Lanterns, torches, fountains, magic visual effects, certain melee visual effects and characters that give off light are all extremely good. Pretty much everything in the game has its own glow effect of some sort that, when combined with the structural designs, non-existent ground clutter and constant looming darkness around you, gives a level of visual immersion which is fucking insane. Exactly how I would advise a game like this to be designed. The UI is good, simple yet brilliant. A simple HP and energy bar on the top left of the screen with an item tab keeping bar on the top right. All that you'd ever need on screen which keeps the focus area very clear. Level layouts are as mentioned, very simple, pretty much no ground clutter and just big enough for me to consider them cosy. Again, exactly how I would advise a game like this to be designed. Character designs are just as high quality as all the other visual assets of the game. Talented pixel artists have clearly worked on the designs of these creatures to give them brilliant detail yet keeping the pixels used to a minimum. The animations are minimal yet dramatic, magic and melee feel powerful, good knockbacks, good death animations, incredible visual effects, very overdramatic projectiles you can't miss and much more. Bosses are also just as impressive but personally I don't really like to give them a chance to show off their animations and try to kill them as quickly as possible. Which we'll go into later, don't worry. Everything else visually speaking, what an incredible job. If I just saw a video online of the gameplay, I would never have guessed that this game was made by an indie dev team. Very impressive. The OSTs in Wayward Souls are somewhat decent, I suppose. Fully orchestrated, slow paced, gentle instruments used to give a very light hearted, somewhat calm feel to the game. There are one or two more exceptional soundtracks that have a much more serious, almost scary feel to them, but the majority of them sound very similar to games like Minecraft and Barony. A bit too light hearted for the style of game in my opinion. The very few serious OSTs fit the game perfectly due to the mild dread and tension you feel when combining them with the aesthetics and gameplay. Almost like a Viviette OST. It is a big shame that there's only two tracks like this in the entire game. Everything else sound related though is very good and very high quality. The sound of enemies taking damage could have been a bit better I suppose, but they're okay. Weapon swings and spell sounds are considerably better, with the two handed melee swings sounding very satisfying. Your character doesn't have any footstep sounds which is a shame. Even very light footsteps would have been better than nothing whatsoever, with varying sounds if you're wearing plate or robes to add to the immersion. The game's sound quality isn't quite as good as the visual standard, but it's overall decent regardless. Now for the gameplay. So firstly, Wayward Souls doesn't have any option for difficulty when you start. It is what it is whether you like it or not, just like every good game should be. When you first start the game you're given a kind of training stage where you play as a paladin character to jump straight into the gameplay, get used to the combat and explain a bit of the game's lore before you do anything else. At the end you encounter a kind of boss fight, die on purpose, then you can select one of the seven heroes available and play the game normally. When you first start playing however, you can only choose from one of three starting heroes as the rest of the heroes have to be unlocked by completing the game's various stages 
by progressing through a set amount of floors through each stage. Now, if you check the game's description on Steam, it does say with a heavy focus on story. They are fibbing a bit there, I'd say, because lore in Wayward Souls is simply, you choose a character, they explain a pretty vague backstory as you descend floors, you also have mini cutscenes and dialogue encounters with NPCs which you don't really know who they are. The lore just feels very rushed, vague and empty in my opinion. Like they're trying a reasonable amount to get a story across to you when there's no point as it's either too brief or too boring. If they put starting floor cutscenes in, interactable NPCs mid-floor and more dialogue, then I'd consider it a story-focused game. But personally, I feel no low would have been the better option due to the kind of game this is. Repeating low cutscenes due to constant deaths would be a massive hindrance on immersion. So I suppose how they have executed the game's story could have been a lot worse. So once you're done with your starting training stage and watched a few cutscenes, you can now choose your character and play. The point of Wayward Souls is to pretty much descend further and further down floors of a randomly generated dungeons, defeat the boss at the end, then move on to the next stage of the dungeon. The game's story mode is made up of three stages. The mines has five floors, the tower has seven, and the catacombs have eight. Sounds like a small number I know, but I can assure you, you won't be getting past these floors very easily, as Wayward Souls is a hard fucking game. The game is similar to Diablo and Gauntlet in terms of game mechanics. You obviously have your general movement as expected. You also have four actions other than movement in the form of your chosen character's equipment. These are translated into a primary weapon attack, a power attack when you hold and release the primary button. This will cost you a bit of the blue energy bar though. You then have your two other pieces of equipment that usually have their own button assigned to it. It is a bit hard to explain but we'll use the warrior as an example. His primary weapon is a dull greatsword. Standard attack is simply a sword swing but your power attack is a lunging attack for extra damage. He then also has his bare fist for tossing axes and a shield to block damage until it breaks. Each hero has their own unique set of three items that they will always start off with no matter what. Some heroes like the warrior have a limited amount of secondary equipment which gets replenished through item drops from random monsters and the chests that you find throughout each floor. Now Wayward Soul's bigger selling point is by far the Ember Forges. When you're progressing floors as usual, as each floor is randomly generated, you may be lucky enough to find an Ember Forge. Once interacted with, you're allowed to upgrade one of your three equipment items to something new with improved benefits. Fucking love it. <laughs> if you're lucky, you may be able to upgrade upgrade all three of your starting items to new ones by the time you finish the dungeon stage you're on. Well, if you can get that far that is. While progressing each floor normally, you'll also come across, other than enemies of course, very few blue fountains which heal a bit of your HP, teleport pads to get around your current floor you're on quicker, pets that you can take with you that do various different things, and chests. Chests can contain gold, the occasional cosmetic only hat, or a consumable item. Consumable items are a huge part of Wayward Souls. You can only carry four at once, but each one can do pretty overpowered things, like permanent stealth for 10 seconds, stun all enemies in range for a set time, and quite a few other things as well. Due to the way the combat works, in rooms with a large swarm of powerful melee and multiple ranged enemies, these consumables are a huge help throughout the game, but fortunately they're not as rare as healing foundings, thank god. But sadly, players that are fate of heart, death in this game is quite harsh. If you die on the mines floor 4 for example, you put back to the character selection screen, lose all of your gathered consumables and item upgrades, and you have to start from scratch all over again. Should you play the same character again, you do however keep the gained cosmetic hats and gold that you've gathered. Cosmetic hats are equipped simply from the start menu, and gold is actually spent on passive character upgrades. Before you choose a character and play, you're given the option to look at upgrades on each hero and purchase them with gold. Another bonus, earned gold and cosmetic hats aren't saved specifically to the character you gain them on, so you can farm gold on the rogue for example, and spend it on your warrior. Each passive is hardly game changing, but does give your hero noteworthy upgrades that will really help your dungeon delving. But if you're really good at this game, you could probably take on the entire dungeon without any need for upgrades, so it's all good. Now for the toughest part of the game, combat. Enemies in Wayward Souls hit hard, swarm you easily and can a lot of the time take quite a few hits to kill. This combined with the average one healing fountain that you'll find per floor and the fact that you don't have any kind of back step or dodge button, unless you play rogue, does make the game incredibly fucking difficult. You'll find that by the time you get to floor 3 and above with less than half HP, no consumable items whatsoever, you are pretty much fucked. <laughs> unless you really play like a hit and run scrub. <laughs> I actually quite like the difficulty of the gameplay if I'm honest. The learning curve is just high enough to keep you on your toes at all times. Boss fights are just as bad. 
Each boss usually has mini phases to make the fight harder by summoning adds, powering up, etc. And when I got to the last floor of the last stage, I was fortunately on full HP and 4 out of 4 consumables, but the fear I felt in my stomach, knowing if I die, I'll have to struggle through 8 floors all over again. But fortunately, I did do my entire playthrough on the raw character. Backstab feature, fucking awesome. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? It's very simple concept, incredible visuals and well polished gameplay provide the player with good immersion, good replayability and good value for money. I'm going to give this game a 4 star or 82 out of 100. Due to the lack of healing fountains and style of gameplay the game has, as I mentioned, the learning curve is surprisingly high. But that's what makes this game great for me. I love the fact you have what you have and that's it. Good luck with your equipment upgrades, consumable items and pet RNG because you're going to need it. As I said before, if the storyline was a bit better and the soundtracks a bit more serious, this would have bumped the overall score up a bit for me. I like the feeling of loneliness present throughout the game, the fact that pretty much everything is interactable in some way and how your character has a slight visual change when upgrading your equipment. But the biggest put off for me is the very high focus on consumable items. If you watch my reviews regularly, you know that consumables really don't do it for me. The fact that you have to pretty much pause the game every single time that you want to use a consumable item alone affects immersion a hell of a lot. And the fact that certain characters have limited resources like the warrior having only a few number of axes and shields, I'm just not a fan of it. I ran the rogue for my whole playthrough and the rogue has no limited equipment amounts whatsoever. I much prefer it. But either way, the game is overall very simple, very fun and if you're a fan of the more hack and slash roguelike games, definitely recommended. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more games I'll be reviewing each week. I've decided to be a cheeky fucker recently and I've now added a donation link on all of my videos from now on. It's obviously not mandatory of course, but if you would like to show your appreciation in the form of a donation, then you're more than welcome to do so. But as always, all the best guys, take care.